Hello, guys. I am back. Sir Toke is back. Is back. We this found is him. the critic. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. the... No melt cartons this week. <laughs> and uh, we we find our way back like a tide from you know. You know. But this is the critic corp. Uh, we're doing a review on the Ring of Power. Episode three, and these are my hosts, the majority Merrick himself, and Eric, aka Clocky, Clocky boy. That is me. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, man. This this episode was was real good. I liked how they jumped right into it. Uh, as far as Aaron Door being captured and imprisoned with the uh with the orcs or whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, that junk was wild. Like soon as he, soon as he got snatched up, he got put in the struggle. It was wild. But uh, and then as far as them showing uh. What's her name? Gadriel? Gladriel. Gladriel. Yeah, Gadriel or whatever. She fucking. She's just over there being a scum, call, pretty much calling them peasants, and they let giving her a place to lay their head. That's only funny as hell. Like she's really acting so high and mighty, like she's above them. And my old boy, uh, Harold. Or uh, what's his name? Was it Harold? Or how? Hamlin. Hamlin. Yeah. In peace mode. Yeah, he, he showed his true colors, bro. I thought I didn't know he had it in them, low key. Jory, is that what you look like in the pits? <laughs> no. Uh, I more resemble <clears throat> the Balrog. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Oh, bro. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just had to ask. <laughs> and the way they uh introduced finally the big old giant dude, forget his name. What they they call him the stranger, I think. Yeah, the stranger. Yeah, his dumbass, fucking snooping around a little hut, the Harfoot hut. I was waiting for that to happen, bro. He was snooping for way too long, or like just. I was wondering what he was doing with his day. Like, you just <laughs> didn't find these creatures ever. <laughs> he's like, just—he's probably just snoozing, bro, waiting on the, waiting on her. Uh, you know, nowhere to come back. Nowhere to come back yeah. with information for his ass. Well, he was too impatient. He got impatient. You know, he was—he was snooping around, exposed himself, but now, shit. He, he rolling with him now. Nah, he with him to the end. I just oh, want yeah, I just want to find out. Find out. I just want to find out. Fall behind. Huh? The only reason they won't fall behind now. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally, bro. I just want to find out what he is really, or where is he from? I'm so I'm so intrigued. That's like really the out of every like out of the whole episode, I was just sitting there at first wondering like, damn. Are they gonna go back to the Harfoots? Like, <laughs> yeah, this is cool and uh, uh I just, I want to, see, I wonder what they doing uh, and then they, like halfway through the episode, they finally flip back to them, seeing what they was doing, preparing for their travels. Come on, no one get left behind. No one walks alone, boy. <laughs> no, you have that one. Oh, Jordy gone. And then they left them in the dust. Literally. Yeah, bro, because you had that one, like, Karen, like, version of what, uh, not Hobbit, what are they? The Harefoots. Yeah. Just trying to straight up leave them immediately. Like, nope, she's out. I don't like it. She lied. <laughs> I don't care if it was a child. Word. Your whole family's getting left behind now. <laughs> The dad can't keep up. Up, oh, well, he's out of here. Like what? Yeah. Was 
So um, rude, bro. Inconsiderate. I thought those people were like, no one left behind. We care about each other. Not like that. Well, I guess. Well, you, I'll be slowing up the crowd. Man. You're getting left behind for sure. So I just want to dive into a couple highlights for me. Um, look at how good these fucking orcs look. Yeah, bro. They look clean. That fucking dog, the warhawk, the warg. The warg. Yeah. Warg. yeah. The warg. Bad, bro. They he reminded me, kind of, he, looked, he looked like the little hyenas off of Lion King, but way better graphics. <laughs> Don't forget they had Way warg. better graphics, bro. Don't forget they had wargs in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I know, but still, mm-hmm. like. It didn't look, look like that. Looked, yeah, he looked clean. No, looked like, you seen better. every. You seen every feature in his from his eyes. To I was his gonna say his head, eyes, his hair coming down his head, all that, bro. But yeah, uh, if you're gonna bring up the warg, though. I do have to say one thing about it. I thought the elves were so weak against it. Like, aren't the like elves supposed to be known for like all their like their strength and agility in the first three? Like, just walked up and then got bit. Like, no struggle, like, nothing. They I might think have been those were like village elves. I think those are like village elves. Like, yeah, I was going to say, those might have been soldiers. Yeah, they, they might have been like trained. That. They grabbed the spear and everything all quick as hell. Like, they were ready to be military and shit. Like, hey, I got, don't know, bro. That just trying, looked a little... What? There were so many other military people there. If they didn't, like, there was no reason for them to be the ones to, like, act. You know what I'm saying? Like, for them to be the ones to spring into action, it's, like, all right, you guys are, like, you're elves. You're, like, supposed to know what you're doing, and you just got, like, chopped in two seconds. Like, only two of you were worth a damn. I think they're trying to. I think they're trying to just give them time for the for the actual soldier elves or whatever to break their chain and get loose. I don't know. That joke was wild. How he came up and seen uh, seen old boys just getting speared through his chest. What's his name? I forget his name. Start with an M. Uh. The other elf oh. that was in the pit. Yeah, the other elf at the end. Yeah, like the, the head, guy. the head elf. Yeah, he had the two uh, arrows in the chest. Um, yeah, yeah, like the, the head elf, the head elf was in charge of it all. Uh, Medor. Yeah, Medor, or Milor, or some shit like that. Yeah. 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 That one was wild. Sad to see him go. I thought he made it, and then I'm like, once I saw him stop there. Like, uh, my guys seen, that either like lost the throat, lost like something. And then I've seen the other or you see the other orcs in the background. You're like, oh yeah, they're they're gone, they're gone. It's like nowhere for him to go. The Southlands, boy. And you know where they're gonna turn that into? Marze, my boy Suron. Let's talk about Ador or Adar. Uh, I feel like that might be a bait and switch. I'm not sure if Adar is necessarily going to be Sauron, um, because I think Adar is com- like a completely new name for Sauron. Um, if it is, uh, like because name. they never referenced that name in the books. There's he has a lot of different names that he's called in the books, uh, but I don't think from what I read online and stuff, I haven't read all. Books. I'm just gonna come out and say that I'm not like the end all know all. Um, but for this, um, what I read was this name was completely new. It could be a completely new character. Um, so I'm not 100 sure or sold that that's gonna be Sauron. But I feel like it could be like maybe his right hand, so to speak, um, for the time being. But it probably will end up being Sauron when all is said and done. So I, don't know, I think it's just another spin image of him or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
the person that I was most interested to meet in this episode actually was Isildur, finally. I'm really excited to see how this guy, let me share this real quick. So bring him up. How this guy becomes uh, this guy. <laughs> that's what we're supposed to become? That's yeah. his story. Yeah, he's the one who kills Sauron. Mm. So we'll see how his journey goes. I mean, yeah, looks so, like it's off to a rocky start. So I feel like in this one, we have a little bit more of an idea of where the series is actually heading. Now that they're setting up like them building this land of Mordor where evil can thrive and everything. And then they introduced us to a Sildor and they're kind of introducing the conflict between men and elves, even in Numenor. Is I that thought the of... world building was really good in this episode, oh, like dude. more particularly. The what? The Numenor? The world building, like, and just like the, you actually got to see like the different cities that they offered. The western land like, of Numenor looked beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Especially lit up at night. I thought that, dude, like the production value of this show, I don't think there's another one that competes. Like, as much as I love House of the Dragon and everything, like the production value overall of this one is just through the roof. But I find myself more invested in the story and characters of House of the Dragon so far. I agree yeah. with you there. I'm, yeah, the story I'm getting more invested in this as like the episodes go on. Like episode one didn't get me. Episode two, I was like, all right, like. This is something I'll probably watch. Episode three, I'm like, okay, like I'll keep up with it now, like for sure. Like I really wanna like see where it goes. But um where's the let's talk about our big negative that me and you talked about last night. Um the main thing that this show I think suffers from is way too many different subplots. Like they're yeah, they just keep talking about what's so going much. on still. Yeah, I'm liking so the, we like the on. world building and you can see all the different areas and all that but in a sense like this is just episode three and I'm kind of like I am getting lost in it a little bit like we were just talking earlier today Malcolm like we were yeah. confused for a minute like where the orcs were if they were in the southlands or not yeah bro like I was like I, and I thought yeah. Andor was from Southland, so I thought they took over that whole land or something. But and like, that's like, the issue when you focus on too many sub characters' stories. And like, I'm, unless they're like, everybody can't be a main character in the end, I guess, is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, and, they, got a, they got a lot of different plots going on. And it's, yeah. It, and it's see, all going to tie like together. I feel like we haven't gotten to spend a lot of time with, like, one certain character or anything. I haven't gotten, like, close. The closest that we've had is, like, that Elrond, and I forget the dwarf's name. Like, forgive me. Um, but when he goes oh, to yeah. dinner with him and his wife, and I felt like that was the closest to character building or anything that we've gotten so far. But overall, like, I don't feel attached to a majority of the characters. I think Andor's got the most, maybe the most screen time or Galadriel. But, uh, I, yeah, I don't, like, I still don't really feel attached to Galadriel in any way, shape, or form. If anything, like, the human in the story, like Nori like, got, I do appreciate him. I feel um, like Nori got, got, got the most time for sure. It's a little hard for the girl. Nori definitely is up there in screen time. Man, I always be like, I'm downplaying her right now for some reason in my head, so I apologize for that. She's like, she does good and everything, but the Harefoot story, like, I enjoy, but again, it's like another, like, huge subplot. Like, I get that you have everything broadening out, but, like, I would love for there to be, like, one main character soon in the story. The next trailer even shows they're, like, bringing back, uh, like, uh, 
you know, and Thor, whatever, his human girlfriend's son. <laughs> He's the one who the found, found the sword. The one who yeah. found the sword. Uh, yeah, so now he's going to be back. And it's like, okay, I, that was a, the whole plot of the story that I totally forgot about. He has this sword. That's huge in this, I guarantee you. Yeah. It's, I it's had part no, of the story. I, like, I totally forgot because we've just been jumping around to everything else. And that's, yeah. that's just difficult to catch up with. I mean, Game of Thrones did jump around a lot too when it started out, but I had a quicker attachment to the characters and I think like there was a better understanding of what was going on by like season three and stuff. Like Ned Stark was in Westeros, like even in House of the Dragon, man. Yeah, like yeah. I have a better yeah. like understanding of the story than I did at I feel like, like they're on the current. same level. Like yeah, how many episodes are gonna be? Dragon. I feel like they're on the same page as far as Power of the Rings and House of the Dragon. They both, they both, they both, they both kicked kicked off like at a different pace for the third episode. It's a really slow burn for this one for me. Yeah, I like, will agree. Just happens story wise, realistically. Like, we're starting to get some sort of idea of the story, but the first few episodes, I feel like, have been a lot of world building for an eight-episode season. It's only but, eight? Yeah. So I feel like we really haven't gotten a whole lot yeah. three episodes into this season. Um, so That has to be worrisome with just how they use the budget. Then. It's like, I get, like, you wanted to put a lot out of there into, like, making sure that, like, your scenes and everything were developed. But, like, if you don't have the story to back it up, then this could all just be the not. Because, think about it, we're still not, like, close with any of these characters almost halfway through the season. Yeah, like, I need to have a strong attachment at least by the end of next episode. Otherwise, well, like, it's going to be difficult to build anything after that, I think. Mm -hmm. It'll just be like kind of too late. And at that point, like I'll want to see more if the show's just like over. Or like they'll get killed off or something too quick. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah, they both Not to be like a hater or anything. Like I said, like I still like what like the show is kind of taking it. Like it's just it is slower. Like a lot, a lot slower. But this last episode did pick up. I like that we kind of Understand that the human traveling with Flag Girl is like tied to like the old king in a way. So that's pretty cool to me. I like that. Um, yeah, I just, I would love for them to focus on a plot now. Like get centralized, pick who you want the main character to be. I mean, I guess it's an ensemble cast and everything, but yeah. I like you gotta you gotta have a focal point still, right? I like, mean, yeah, everybody how, does. That's how Lord of the Rings was, though. They all, it all, it was a whole bunch of subplots, and it all tied together. At the it, yeah, I was gonna say, like, it still felt focused. Like you knew what the objective yeah. was from the beginning. We and still do had an attachment to this. them, like immediately. Like I don't really, like I don't feel like Jordy said. I don't feel for any character. Like in Lord of the Rings, I feel like I was attached to people like at yeah, the start of the movie. when Frodo meets <laughs> off the first time, like you can tell that history there. Like he that Gandalf isn't always around. Like it's a special occasion when he's around. You see that they know each other because of Bilbo. Um so and you can see the history there from what we know about the Hobbit and everything. So I think that it, I don't really see an excuse here to not have like a relationship with these characters about three episodes in. Like they did yeah. a good job with, uh, let me pull up the guy's name. 
because there's a huge visual attachment to this series, but not a huge emotional attachment to it. I mean, well, uh, talking, uh, Gabriel, Gadriel, or whatever. Gladriel. <laughs> Gladriel. She's becoming attached to Harlan or Harger. They're becoming, you know, closer. Yeah. And yeah. Then, but like, and then, uh, you know, Vorian. Halbrand. That's his name, not Halbrand. Hellbrand, yeah, Hellbrand. But uh, the stranger and fucking Vori's coming more. He sees he's like more because he's starting to become more fluent with their ing with their language and actually, you know, comprehending stuff. Um, and then you know, the dwarf and uh, Ella. What's his name? Illinois. Il Dude, these names are tough. Yeah, these names are like hard to remember and then pronounce at the same time. But we gonna get it. We gonna get it. We gonna get it. I, Slowly but surely, you know, it. we're not even halfway through the uh, series yet. So everybody, Maybe, this, everybody has a bond. Everybody has a bond so far. I, I see it. I see, they're like I said, they're neck and neck for me right now, House of Dragons. And so do we want to get to our final thoughts? Yeah, yeah, let's do final thoughts. Let's wrap it up. I will go first, and I will most definitely give it a A. You know, to consider in the third episode, and they just opened up a few more things, and it's only going to go up from here, I feel like. Um... And then the way they showed Adar at the end, on, I know for sure the next episode is about to get spicy. It's about to get spicy for sure. So only time will tell. But yeah, I will give it to my other host, co-host, Jordy. Um, so on this one, I did bring up a lot of things I really liked, but my big gripes right now and worries are with how slow this pace is going. Um, that we're not going to get like a full story almost this season because even though it's a slow burn with like House of the Dragon, you're still intrigued. These conversations and the dialogue, there's so much happening in those rooms and those scenes compared to this that even though it's a slow burn, it still feels like things are moving. So oh, for this one, I'm going to have to go with B minus. I really enjoyed a lot of the things, um, but I'm a little bit worried about the pacing and not being attached to the, a lot of the characters. Yeah, no, I was going to say uh, B, B plus, you know, it just, it is worrisome not being attached to anyone right now, but uh, again, like I do really enjoy like seeing everything and the world building that they are creating. That is something that is ahead of like House of the Dragon. Oh, it's beautiful. But House of the Dragon story, I like that it's more focused. Like even though we're jumping like years ahead in it, like there's a goal. Like people understand like what the plot is over here. Like it is moving around like it's trying to figure out which plot like you need to focus in on still like I don't know things are just a little too shifty for me right now to make it like a better call and the thing is with House of the Dragon too that's 10 episodes yeah and like look and at I where we're like already we at more in that story 100% not trying to be a hater sorry not trying to hurt your feelings so <laughs> I still enjoyed it. It was like better action than this, and I love the city. So, like, I'll keep it at a B, B plus. All right. Well, you heard it from us. A, B minus, B plus. What did you think about this? That about wraps it up for us. Um, at the Critic Corp, you can always like and subscribe down at the bottom. 
Um, we are going to be doing a few other videos coming up. Bahubali is probably going to be one of our next movies we review. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Tomorrow is our House of the Dragon. Um, if you have any recommendations, also drop those down below. Um, do you guys got anything else before we wrap this up? No, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much. Please comment. We do read them. All right. Like we say before, we don't have anything better to do with our time. So we want to talk to you guys, see what you're watching. Yeah. Right. Nice. Bye, guys. Till next time.